you read it. Nope. Our, our, our vision is our vision is a church family bringing people to Christ. That is our vision. Uh, see, I, I've done a bad job of making sure you guys know this, so I'll make sure you know this. Our mission is this, changing the world through Christ. Our core values, we are Christ-centered. It's all about Him. We honor one another to glorify God. People are at the center of God's heart. We unashamedly believe the power that gives the fruit of the Holy Ghost. We are led by His Spirit. We are contributing, not just consuming. We are valuable to the body of Christ. We will always bring our best. Excellence honors God. We love our community. We are the salt and we are the light. We will be radical givers. It's better to give than to receive. We are focused in our mission. Sometimes less is more. We eat the steak and leave the gristle, having a teachable spirit. We do not take this place for granted, but we are thankful for the place that God has brought us to and the house of God he has brought us to to worship. Somebody just give me an amen about that. Amen. amen. Thank you for listening to that. And I'm going to have it try to plaster it where I can plaster it. Uh, I was going to have it put on the wall, but it got very expensive very quickly to, all, to write all that out and paint all that out. So we're, I'm, I'm figuring out another way to do it. And so uh, we're going to do it another one. All right? All right. Brother Rick, you good? I love it. You guys are such a people, man. I love it. I love it. Y'all good? Amen. Man, I have enjoyed Thank you, the series Facing Your Darkness. Yes. It has caused me to look inwardly. It has caused me to look at myself and face some dark things in my life. It has caused me to reevaluate myself in a lot of areas. See, I don't just preach to you. It comes from me, but it has to come through me. Right. And comes from God, I'm sorry, I said that wrong. It comes from God, it has to come through me. So forgive me, or edit that. Okay? It comes from God, but it has to come through me to get to where it's going to go. And so when it comes through me, God begins to deal with me. And God begins to change me. And, and every, every series I've preached, it's convicted my spirit. It's convicted my soul. It's convicted me in everything that I do. And I have to adjust and rearrange things in my life. Well, Brother Jeff, you're not supposed to say that. You're supposed to be the perfect little preacher. Not going to happen. You're not going to find one. You can find one that acts like they are, but you're not going to find one that is. And so if, if, if the Word of God doesn't challenge you and the Word of God doesn't change you and the Word of God doesn't convict you of some areas of your life, you're not reading the right Word. Because no matter what you read, God's speaking. God's speaking from Genesis to Revelation. He's speaking from the, the, the table of contents to the maps. He's trying to get you to do something different in your life because he's working on me. Remember that little song? <coughs> make him what I ought to be. Took him just a week to make the moon and the star. Jupiter and Mars. He's still working on me. Tana Jones and David Jones, their little girls used to say he's still walking on me. <laughs> that when they're about four, three, two, one. So, <coughs> awesome. okay, Bible turn to Second Peter chapter three, Tana, and we're gonna start with verse four. Uh, I ask you to invite somebody Wednesday night. We're wrapping up. Saved but enslaved. We're gonna talk about poverty. If you know somebody who has a poverty mentality, please bring them. Because God does not have a poverty mentality. If you know somebody who's trapped in poverty, please bring them. That could be you. Because God is not pleased with poverty. That's good, Brother Jeff. I know. You cannot tell me that God's pleased with poverty. No. You can't tell me that God's happy when His people suffer because they don't have enough. I don't believe it. You can't make me believe it. And I will do it. You can't convince me that God's happy when his people are in lack. I don't believe it. So please bring somebody Wednesday to, to come to church uh, and, and be in, in that service. We're going to wrap it up. And after that, uh, uh, I'm going to do, some, I'll do something different on Wednesday nights for a little while. And then I'll go back into another series. But uh, I, I, wanna just, I want you guys to, 
uh, to come and please bring somebody. It, it's not that hard to bring somebody. Just go, hey, you're going to church with me. Where, you go, where do you go to church? It's at Temple of Praise Church. Oh, I've heard about that. That's the church by Kentucky Red Chicken. Yeah, I've heard about that church. It's kind of rough on women. So what? Uh, suck it up. Come on. You're coming with me. It's not that hard. They'll come with you if you ask them. Come buy them a hamburger. They'll come with you. Most people go anywhere for a hamburger. I've learned that to be true. Chili dogs and hamburgers, they'll follow you anywhere. That's what we've done on Wednesday nights. Amen. Chapter 3, verse 4 says, uh, did I say that wrong? Second Peter 3 and 4, is that what I told you? Yeah. Alright. And say, and say, where is the promise of His coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. The part I want to get to is this. For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. Let's pray. Father, I give, you, I give you honor in this house and I thank you for opportunity to speak your word. I thank you for this body of believers and this church of believers. I thank you for them. I give you praise for them and I ask that you help me to be the best I can be for you. Help me to speak into their lives the words you've spoken into mine. And God, I give you praise in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Your life has not always been like it is right now. Go put that back up for me, please. Your life has not always been like it is right now. What they're saying in this is all things have been as, as, as they have been from the creation, but that was a lie because Noah happened between the beginning and creation. So something changed. A lot of things changed between the beginning of the world, from the uh, beginning of, of creation to tell where they were at in 2 Peter. A lot of things had changed in that time period. Jesus came to earth, and Jesus was crucified and rose again between the beginning and 2 Peter. Things always change, and if you're not changing, you're what? What's the, what's the saying? If you're, not, if you're not growing, you're dying. And a, a, and a speaker said Saturday, he said this, he said, we're all dying. There's, we all are headed toward a grave unless the Lord come. We're all headed toward death. It may be 60 years from now. It may be 30 years from now. It may be 30 seconds from now. You don't know exactly when, but we are all headed toward a casket with somebody telling somebody what a great person they were, and then 30 minutes after we put them in the ground, we're at Taco Bell telling jokes. <coughs> Come on, help me now. Come on, I'm just being real, and I'm just, and we're sad, and we miss those people, and we're and we're very brokenhearted, and we're all upset, but we're all headed toward eventual death, lest the Lord come, right? Okay. And so your life has not always been the way it is now, and it's not always going to be the way it is now. There's something that's going to change in your life in the next few minutes, maybe the next few years. When you leave this building, your cells will have regenerated. You won't be the same person that you came in here at. All the cells will be dead that came, when you came in there. Anyway, your steps will not always take you through the fire. You're not always going to be where you're at right now. You're not always going to be in the same place right now, that you are right now. You're not always going to be where you are at this particular moment because you're not always going to have the opportunities that you have right now. You're not always going to have them. You're not always going to have, you're not always going to walk through the fire of your life, but you're not, sometimes you're going to walk into blessing. Sometimes we walk through fire. Did you walk through fire? Was there one? There was one. Fire walks with you. Have you ever walked into a blessing? Of course. We're not ever, we never stay put as long as we keep walking. Sometimes we walk through fire and sometimes we walk through blessing, but still we have to keep walking. There's no reason to stop and quit. There's no reason that we can't go on with God, even though there may be a hard time in our life, but some things have got to change, and we've got to change the time. And so whenever we walk through things, we are walking into the future, and we're not staying in our past. And, and so we have to say this, we have to say this, that men will not always fight against you. Sometimes they will fight for you. Amen. Uh, what do I mean? This is what I mean. 
the same people that are fighting against you right now, in the, in the maybe in the near future, will be fighting for you. Let's just think about this for a minute. <coughs> the same men that saw command that David commanded. You with me? The same men that were tracking down David now became the trackers for David. You with me? The same men that are the same men that are that are that are against you, it seems like right now, they will be walking with you and not too, uh, they were fighting for you not in the near not too far in the near future. The winds of change are blowing through your life at all the time. At all times. God is moving all the time and he's blowing through your life. There's something changing in your life right now. So listen, I, I guarantee you right now in your life, there's something different than was last month. Not in my life, there wasn't baloney. Something different. You're either fatter or you're skinnier. You either gained five pounds or you lost five pounds. Something's different in your life. You either you either um, uh, paid a different amount for your table than you did the next last month. Something's different. I don't know what it is, okay? Something has changed. And so the winds of change are always blowing through your life. No longer to be the same, but to be changed. I'm, I'm not, I, I, when I say change, I don't I want you to think that God's going to radically change your eye color or your hair color is going to be different without chemicals or you're, you're, something like that's not going to happen. You're, but something in your life is going to have to change for you to be a living, breathing creature walking through this life and walking through this earth. And so no longer will you be the same, but you will be changed. No longer will you be weak, but you'll be strong. See, so many times we walk through this life and we act like, I'm always going to be this weekly. No, you're not. You're not. Because you're walking through this fire, the next time it's coming across and coming against you, you're stronger to fight against the fire. I don't know if you realize this, but sometimes, I just want to get this across to you, maybe you haven't noticed this, and maybe it's just me because I'm weird. But so many times in my life I've found that it seemed like the battles in my life took a long time to get through, and now they don't seem to take as long to get through. So is it the battle that's not as long, or is it just that I've learned to be stronger in the battle? Is it, is it that, I've long, uh, that I've learned to trust in the commander of the troops? And it doesn't seem like the shelling lasts as long. Maybe I'm just deaf now. But maybe it just doesn't seem that it takes me as long to walk through as it used to take me to walk through. And maybe, I, maybe I'm just weird, but I think it's because you become stronger the longer you fight. As long as you don't quit, you become stronger in the battle. You become stronger. No longer be satisfied with okay but you're seeking excellence. Yes. I'm not satisfied anymore with what I was satisfied with five years ago. Right. I'm not. Right. Five years ago, if there was this many people on a Sunday morning, I'd have been doing cartwheels. Right. Now I'm looking for the next one. Yes. Where's the next family? Yes. Where's the next one I can speak into their lives? Yes. Where's the next one? Where's the next leader that I can train up to say, yeah, I want you to speak into their lives? Where's the next leader that I can raise, that God can help me raise up in the train to say, you know what, I need you to bless this, this certain area of people. Because there's, listen, there's some things in my life, I don't know what it's like to be addicted. I don't, but there's people sitting here that do. Yeah. Yeah. And it's their, it's my responsibility to get them to realize that God brought them through that yes. to help the next guy yeah. or girl. Yeah. I can't relate with that. I can't relate with meth addiction. But there's some people that come to church here that, not, that can relate with it. And God has gloriously set them free. Oh, I, can't, I can't relate with alcoholism. Because I've never been an alcoholic. But there's people that have come to this church every Sunday morning. And they give time and they give offering and they bless us. They're here every Sunday morning. They know exactly what it's like yeah. to be bound by alcohol and not be able to get out of it. But God gloriously yeah. set them free. Yeah. I can't relate with that. But why do you think God would bring them here? Oh, Jesus, help me. Okay, I got to go on. I got to go on. But see, the things that used to satisfy me don't satisfy me anymore. 
Does that mean I'm not happy to see you? No, that's not what that means. But I love seeing you. I love seeing you come in the building. I love seeing you drive up. I love seeing you. Yeah, drive me crazy because you get here like five minutes still. And it's always, I'm always freaked out. Okay? But, but it's still, I'm glad to see you. But God is changing our time. God is changing our time. God is changing our season. Do you feel it? Yes. Yes. Remember, I don't know, you know, I'm weird, so sometimes, and I don't mean that like a bad weird, I'm just kind of, um, but have you ever been outside and felt the north wind blow, and you go, whoa, that's cold, and you know the times have changed. Yeah. You know the seasons have changed. <clears throat> If you're, if you're, you know what I'm talking about? You've been outside and it's, it's 80 degrees. And if you've never lived in Oklahoma for a very long period of time, it's 80 degrees and a 20 below zero wind gust comes through. Yeah. And you're like, whoo. Yeah. That's different. That's different. And you know that winter time's coming, even though that's battling the heat right now and the high pressure is, but it's coming down and it's trying to push the it's trying to push the heat away because those those cold fronts are coming down from from uh, from uh, whatever Canada or wherever they come from and they're coming down and they and you can feel the change in the weather even the wind smells different yeah. Yeah. it does a south wind you can smell the dirt in it. Well, I, I think you can. Maybe I'm just crazy, but I think you can smell the dirt in. And those cold winds that come from the north that are so dry, it's just crisp. I don't know how to, how to explain it. It's like breathing refrigerator air. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Oh, like no one ever has refrigerator refrigerator cleaning the thing out. Okay, okay. Y'all have to be like, I don't like y'all ain't ever done that. But God's not only changing our time, but He's changing our season. From autumn when the leaves fall on the ground, you guys, I love that time of year. I like, I like hot. I don't like cold. I'm not built for cold. Don't like cold. Hate cold. I know cold has to come, and that's fine. But the autumn and the spring and the summer are my favorite times of year. But in the autumn when the leaves fall to the ground, making a blanket for a warmth for the soil to keep everything alive, isn't it amazing what God does? Isn't it amazing what God does? Oh, I forgot. I was taught in school it happens much yet. Making all things look like they're dead. Making the trees go into hibernation and the flowers seem to be gone, but they're really just dormant. Everything... Everything seems to be dead, and it's not even winter time yet. It's just autumn, but the seasons are changing. It's gone from summer when everything is when all the Bermuda grass when it gets 120 degrees greens up, and now it's and now it's and now it's all green, and and then all of a sudden it seems like in, in just a few hours everything begins to fall off the trees, and everything looks dead, and all the flowers seem to be gone. Winter time comes and the cold and the cloudy times come. I think a reason I don't like winter time is because it's so depressing. We get a few days that are just bright and sunny and you think it ought to be 100 degrees outside and it's like 15. It's like, mm. And everything gets cold. Your feet get cold, then you're really cold. Your head gets cold, your eyes and your nose, and you're like covered up. You just can't stand winter time. The time of stay, it's a time of staying inside and not really moving around a lot. You're just kind of stuck in the house. And everybody's getting on your nerves and lives in your house. Anybody ever been there? You're thanking God for Netflix. The time of time of staying inside and there's nothing really going on. There's no movement outside. There's, you know, all the animals that are hibernating are hibernating and, and there's there's a few birds, but not really any birds that are, that are singing and, and chirping. There's not anything really going on because they know it's cold outside as well. And they, and they just go out and they just, when they have to go out, but they usually they stay where, where their homes are. 
Listen, they're not moving before. They're not moving as tires before. They're not as free to come and go because the outside situations. So hear me. You're sitting here tonight and some of you are going through winter. Some of you are going through autumn. Some of you are in the summertime. And some of you are in the spring. I heard this guy one time and he was prophesying over this young man. And he was telling him, this is the spring of your life. Things are going to happen. Hallelujah. And all this stuff is going on. And in my mind, I'm so goofy, but in my mind, I'm thinking, yeah, but in the spring, that's when storms come. Yeah. Even though, even though it's when things bloom, it's when storms come. Spring is when tornadoes tear some stuff up. Spring is when tornadoes hit pastures and flip tractors over and stuff. And even though you're having the best time of your life and God's moving in your life, the springtime is a rough time. Yeah, How many yeah. were up last Wednesday <laughs> when <laughs> blowing poly carts and stuff around? And, and was it Wednesday? Yeah. Dark, yeah. Wednesday morning? Yeah. Whatever, yeah. Dark, yeah. whatever it was. Yeah. And blowing tree limbs down and pouring rain. You couldn't even see outside. It was pouring so hard outside. Electric going off. Electric going off. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> we're sound asleep. My wife is so slow. We're sound asleep. We have a ceiling fan in our bedroom. We have to. And so, as soon as the ceiling fan stops, she gets up and, oh, <laughs> the electric's off. That's the only thing she's worried about because the ceiling fan went off and it just, she, she about died. And she's burning smooth up, right? And so. <laughs> That's what woke her up. Not the, the not the thunder and lightning, not the wind, not the rain. Her, she heard none of that. All she was oh, the ceiling fans off. Y'all pray for her. Amen. There's not any movement. There's not any movement like at other times in our lives. Have you ever noticed that when it snows, everything seems to be real quiet? I like it when it snows. I don't like it when it's cold, but I like it when it snows. Let's do it three times. Yeah. Everything gets quiet and still. I don't have to work. <laughs> awesome. I get to sleep in. I get to stay in the house. And then I get to go outside and play in the snow. It's awesome. I love it when it snows at least a couple of inches and, and where you can do something with it. I love it. I talked to my niece the other day and it had got cold again and snowed and she's just so just so ready for it to be over with. You know, the, you think about they're in Wasilla and so they think about you think about how much snow they get and then all of a sudden she's just sick of it. She's ready for it to be over with. And it was cold again and she's like, oh it's ready for spring to get here and stay here. So we have the same problem. It seems to come and go here pretty often too. Have you ever noticed when it snows, everything seems to get quiet, peaceful. Occasionally a car will come by, a four-wheeler pulling people out, but most everything else stops. In the wintertime, in the wintertime we start preparing for spring. I do. I start thinking about what I want to do and how, you know, because everything's gone so you can actually see what trees need to be cut down and, and how you can get this because there's no foliage so you can actually see where the trees are and how and what needs to be cut around and what all the stuff that needs to happen and all the things that need to happen. And so in the springtime you begin to plant or sorry in the wintertime you begin to plant what's going to happen in the springtime and you start saying you know what here's what's going to happen we're going to get new furniture we're going to rearrange the furniture we're going to we're going to do we're going to build this thing out there we're going to do all this stuff and you start making plans in this season for the next season you start saying, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go on vacation. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get this stuff done. I'm, I'm getting ready for new things to happen because when you're in the middle of wintertime, springtime's just around the corner. And if you don't make preparation for springtime, when the springtime happens, man, it gets a little quick. And now you're behind yeah. mowing, yeah. and you're behind with everything because you just got behind. You weren't ready. 
Spring hits and new life begins. New life comes from what seems to be dead. New, time, new things come from the, uh, from the, from the forefront. Wintertime, it begins to melt away. The memories of the cold and the gray seasons, they turn, they turn to the promise of the sun and the warmth and new life and new blessings happen. Can I share something with you? We have to look. we we'll throw my scripture back up there, Brother Ethan. We have to say this. Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. That's not true because change is coming in your life. And change is coming in this church. And I said, oh, can't you feel it? Yeah. I can feel it. Yeah. Differences are coming. Things are happening differently. Things are, things are going to happen very rapidly. Yeah. And they have to. They have to. New things come no more to be the same, but to go through a time of refreshing. Yeah. We have got to be refreshed. It's time to launch out. Yeah. Maybe relaunch out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Maybe we went out to the to and out of the and the lake and the driver, the boat driver person took us out of the lake. <laughs> you weren't here this morning, you don't know. <laughs> and they come and they bring us back to the dock, and we get used to being in the dock. Because there's restaurants at the dock. You get a fish sandwich at the dock. Amen? There's gasoline at the dock. There's drinks at the dock. There's everything. There's safety in the dock. There's all those things. And so we get back to the dock, and maybe it's time to relaunch again. Launch out again. Be part of something new again. Except, say, say to God, God, I, I, expect, I accept everything you've given me, but now it's time to relaunch. Listen, can, you, can, you can never go back through the winter that you just came from. Come on now. Yeah. I'm going to get to something real fast. You just listen to me for 11 more minutes. I'll cut you loose. When you go through a winter time in your life when everything seems to be dead and everything seems to be gone and it's cold and you're not moving around and the outward circumstances keep you from going outside and doing what God's called you to do, you can never go back through that winter you life you just went through. You can, you can never go back through the winter of 2017. You can never go back through that. You have to go through the winter of 2018. But you can't go back through the winter of 2017. You can never go back through the same winter time you just passed through. No one can ever bring you back to the time of your winter season. You can never go back, and they can't bring you back unless you let them bring you back. You can never go back through that winter time. You can go back through the memories, and nobody can take you through the what you've already walked through. You have got to continue to walk forward in this thing. You have to. When everything looks dead, when the times of planting took place, that is when you have to be planting and be what God has wanted you to be. This is what God does. He gives you a time of planting. Yes. What? The winter time for me is a time of planting. What do you mean by that, Brother Jeff? This is what I mean. When I can't get outside and do what I want to do, I get in the house and plan what I want to do for when I can get outside of the house. Yeah. Dean Welsh mows more grass than any person I've ever seen in my life other than the Pollards. Team Pollard and Team Welsh mow more grass. They, it's incredible to me the, what they get done and how, and how they can do it. And, and they do stuff. Make a list. Check it twice. But you plan it. You don't just get over there, oh, I guess we'll go over here, but I guess we'll go over there. And I guess we'll do. You have a plan. You should have a plan. Because if you don't have a plan, you're going to waste a lot of time saying, well, what do you think we ought to do, Bill? Well, what do you think we ought to do, Dan? What do you think we ought to do, Justin? What do you think we ought to do, Tanner? What do you think we ought to do, whoever worked on the They make it work. Just Tanner. Oh, okay. <laughs> Tanner, what do you think, where do you think we ought to go, Tanner? What do you think we ought to do? By the time they figure it out, the half the day is gone. So if it's a time of planning to do what he's going to do on Saturday. Because if he doesn't do that, Saturday's halfway gone, and he finds himself having nothing done. So a time of planning has to be there. Not only your plans, but God's plans. Not only your hopes, but God's hopes. God has your hopes of a new beginning. God, God places your hopes of these things to be better than the times of challenge in your life. He wants you to have plans to do greater than you've ever done. Yes, 
I don't know if I'm not getting this across. Maybe I don't care. But God just wants you to do greater than you've ever done. He wants you to make a plan. God made a plan. He didn't say, eh, you know, whatever happens. I'm going to breathe into this guy. Whatever happens to him happens. He made a plan. I'm going to look at this earth and I'm going to form it kind of, I get it. I'll just start spinning and see what happens. Wow, Mars. Wow, that's cool. No, he didn't do that. He made a plan. And so and all, everybody has a plan. And we have a plan in our lives. Listen, not only are your plans, but God's plan, your hopes of a new beginning, your hopes of the, of the things to be better, times of change in your life. No one can take you back to the season God has brought you through. Don't let anything bring you back to the season God has brought you through. Be done with it. Let that season hold for itself. Oh, what I said, how do I say this? any better than this. Don't let that season control you. Don't let that winter affect your summer. Don't be in the cold when it's 100 degrees outside. Well, that doesn't make any sense. No, but listen. Don't, don't let your season be cold when it's 100 degrees outside. Let your, let your winter be winter, your spring be spring, your summer be spring, your summer be summer, and your autumn be autumn, but let every season be its own season. Don't, don't just sit here and say, you know what, God, I want you to change, I want you to change these things. Father, I, I want these things to change in my life. I don't want it to be the same from now to the end of creation. I don't want all that. I want it to be different. And then when God begins to change, it go back to what it was. That's dumb. Don't ask God to change your life and then hold on to your old life. Right, right. Don't ask God to get you out of this winter time and when spring comes, you hide in the winter because you have a coat. Yeah. I can't, but God, I can't wear my coat in the summer and it's, it's awesome. Get you a pair of shorts and some flip flops and put some white stuff on your nose and go to the beach. Whatever, you know, whatever. Do whatever you have to do. But don't stay in those seasons when God has brought you from that season. Yeah. Okay. I, I, that's, I don't get anything else. Get that. No one can undo the things that God has placed in the season ahead for you. Amen. I, in my yard, there's flowers that come up sporadically. Because somebody planted them. I didn't plant them. I think my Aunt Jean planted them. When she lived there, but they just start shooting up. I didn't plant them then. Somebody did. There's tiger lilies that come up around a dead stick. It used to be a tree, and I we didn't. I mowed them down. I weeded them down. I've done everything to dig them up. That's the reason they keep coming up. But I'm just too lazy to dig them up, so I don't want to because it don't bother me that bad. Okay? But every spring, <laughs> Tiger Lily City, man. And I didn't plant them. And until I dig them up, they're going to come up till the end of time. Yeah. And that's good. You know? and it's, and I want them to come up because they're, they're pretty, but they get in my way. And, they're, and it's kind of ugly now because they're just around the stick. It used to be a tree. I don't want to plant a tree. And so, and so not, especially not there. And so, I, I, I say that to say this. That nobody can take what's going to come up from your season that God's already planted ahead of you. What do you mean by this? God has something in your next season that you can't get in the wintertime. I don't get tiger lilies in the wintertime. They don't come up through the ice. They don't come up through the snow. They don't come up through a just frozen tundra of Lambeau Field. Okay? They, don't, they don't come up through that stuff. But when it gets wet and it gets hot, it takes like two days. And boom, there are tiger lilies everywhere. And then in about two or three weeks, they're going to bloom. They're going to grow. Right now it's just the leaves. About two or three weeks, they're going to go bloom. They will. Every year. But I don't get that in the wintertime. I don't get that in the fall. And I don't get that in the summer because I die in the summer. Because I don't want them. Okay? I 
go. And then they die, but every spring they come up. Because God has, God has placed this. God has, God has placed some stuff in your life that's going to come up that you're not going to get the season you stay in. You have to go to the next season to get it. And so if we continue to stay in the season we're in, we'll never get what God has for us in the, in the next season. Don't stay in the don't Don't stay. Be where God has called you to be. Get to the next, get to the next thing. Get to the next thing. No one can undo the things that God has for you in the next season. Listen, spring rains bring us into the times of refreshing. Don't you love it when it rains and all the stuff gets washed out of the air? Amen. I love it. You go. <sighs> Don't you love that smell of rain? You can smell it coming. Yeah. Man. Some of y'all looking at me like, smell it. Right? Get out of the house. <laughs> Turn the TV off. Go outside. There is a smell of dirt. And there is a smell of air and rain and fresh cut grass. There's just those smells that will never, you know, when I was a kid, people used to burn leaves. They can't really do it anymore because people get all spit out of shape. But I remember piles of leaves burning down the neighborhood. And they smelled so good. Now if you do that, somebody call the fire department, they'd be freaking out. But, I saw smoke, I saw smoke. And whatever. But they don't do that anymore. But you know, back in that day, we had what we call screen doors. I know it's weird, okay? And you could smell it everywhere. These people burn their leaves. Now you have to bag them up, which I hate, because so I don't do it. And so I just I wish I could just put them in a pile of this. I guess you probably could, but they better better do it behind the house. <laughs> they burn them at night. They burn them at night so they can't see the smoke. Okay? Just saying. Don't do that, please. Don't say that. <laughs> what is it? Foggy. Foggy. There you go. <laughs> Dean, that's what Dean's heard anyway. <laughs> He's heard. Yeah. He's heard that's the best time. That's what people at work said. <laughs> 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 the spring comes and refreshing comes. And it's getting us ready for the summer. It's getting us ready for the summer. I was watching Jed Castle. That's me. Weather guy. The other day. And he said, I know you guys don't want storms, but we got to have this amount of rain. We'll get this amount of rain in the summertime. We're going to have drought conditions, and it's going to be ex extremely hot, and it's going to be blah, 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 blah. We've got to have rain, so we just suck it up by the cup about the storm. That's basically what he was saying. Because if we don't get prepared for the summer, the summer will burn you up. Uh, being an Oklahoma kid growing up in Oklahoma, I remember times when there were cracks. Probably an inch, inch and a half wide in the dirt. We used to pour water in them just to see how deep they were. We were too stupid to know they going out another place. We just anyway, so. But anyway, we're kids, you know. And they would put they would put tar on the asphalt, and it would bubble. Yeah. And we were so goofy, we were barefooted, popping tar. Pow, 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 pow. Well, we were. We had leather feet. Hot didn't bother us, Lord. But, you know, rocks didn't bother us. But that's hot. We had Fred Flintstone feet, man. It just, it just, we didn't wear shoes from the time we got out of school in May until we had to go back to school. Shoes were optional except for church. That's the only time we ever had to put shoes on. We had Walmart feet. We went to Walmart with Stadia shoes on. Grocery store. I don't know. We were we were, we were OP'd out, man. I don't know. It was just, you just had to grow up in the North End of Highland, know what I'm talking about. But anyway, the summer brings heat and the dry that prepares us for the battle. The refiner's fire, taking out the impurities that we can, so we can make it through the fall, which is coming. See, I use this scripture because I wanted to put, get this across to you. 
People say, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. And I use this for this reason. Everything in your life changes. Don't ever let anybody say, well, it's always been this way. No, it hasn't. No, it hasn't. It hasn't always been this way. There was a time in your life when you would have never been caught dead in the church, much less on a Sunday night. There was a time in your life when Saturday night meant party time. A time in your life when Sunday night meant party time, Monday night meant party time, Tuesday night meant party time. Wednesday night meant party time. There were times in your life when everything was a little different than it is now. There are times in your life that you were with somebody different than you're sitting beside right now. Help me now. Yeah. Come on. There were times in your life when you thought that they were the only person you're ever going to have in my oh, I just love them. <laughs> and now you think to yourself. <laughs> really? Tell the truth. What was I thinking? Not what I was feeling. What was I thinking? A, God, sorry. Anyway, so anyway. Sorry, I have flashbacks of time. <laughs> Times of refreshing come that we can make it through the valleys. Testing our abilities is what the summertime does. To stand in the heat of battle. Can you stand in the heat of battle? When all hell is breaking loose against you, do you just cave? Do you just run away? Or do you remember you have five smooth stones and a sling? Do you remember that there was a time in your life that you were in a lion's den and God shut a lion's mouth and you slept well and the king stayed awake all night? Do you remember there was a time when the, the king said you're going to worship that and you said, no, I'm not? And everybody else that had anything to do with the fire died, but you survived because of the providence of God in your life. Do you remember the times? Do you, do you remember those times? Or do you just cr crumble and fall and say, oh God, I knew you were going to do it this time. Oh God, I knew you were going to do it this time. Oh God, I knew you were going to do this or do you remember the time you were in a pit because your brothers threw you in there? And they sold you. And you were, the, you were not only were you a slave, now you're a prisoner. And then all of a sudden now you're uh, in, in the king's palace. And then the lady, Potiphar's wife, she lies on you. You find yourself back in the, in the dungeon again. Now yeah. what happened? But you have to remember that God was preparing him to save his family. Come on, guys. Yeah. Not everything's going to work out like you think it's going to work out. You'll have to go sometimes for a pit experience and a, and a lion experience and a Goliath experience. There's times in your life you'll have to face a Jericho wall. There's times in your life that you're going to have to face an ark building. And you don't know how to build an ark. There's many times in your life when you're going to have to say nobody, you know, nobody but your family seems to be on your side. Everybody else seems to be against you. There's, there's, there's going to be times in your life where you're going to actually have to fight battles. I'm sorry to break the news to you, but you're not going to get through this world unscathed. Right. You're, going to have a, you're going to have a skinned knee and a busted lip. Yeah. You might even lose a tooth or break a bone. You're not going to get through this thing without a scar. Right. Jesus didn't. What makes you think you are? Right. Come, on. Come on, man. Jesus not only was scarred, but he died. So you're going to, I don't know he's resurrected, that's great, hallelujah, I'm glad, but listen, you're going to not, you can't make it through this thing without a scar. Sometimes wounds seem like they're going to kill you, I get it, before they ever quit bleeding. I get it, I get it. it makes us ready for times of drought, summertime, I mean, the summer makes us ready for times of drought. Walking by faith, a refreshing coming. Amen. When you can't feel it in your life, and Acts, Acts 3 19 is the last one. No, Acts 3 19. Go ahead up there. Sorry. Read 
Remember, therefore, be converted. Is that right? Repent, yeah. therefore, be converted. Your sins may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Yes. We're, we are refreshed for being in His presence. Yes. We're refreshed by being in the presence of the Lord. The times of summer come, the times of heat come to make us ready for times of the drought. To make us ready so that times of refreshing will come in our lives. Ephesians 6.13 and I'll leave you alone. <coughs>
because all the little ladies are on hold and they say they crank up the heat and I'm dying, I'm dripping, trying to put <coughs> tortillas on the shelf. And so I, I soon just wear long sleeves and shorts and don't. I know that doesn't make any sense to anybody but me. But get out of my get off my street, okay? <laughs> Hear me. I'm gonna wrap this up really quick. Church, we're in a season. I know outwardly it's spring, but inwardly it's summer. I mean, I'm sorry. Inwardly it's winter because this is a planning time and a time to get ready for new beginnings. In a church setting, we're in a winter season because we're in a planning period. Because I don't know if you know this or not, but we're about to do a great big move. Yeah. I say about to. If, if. I'm just telling you, builders and architects drive me nuts. <laughs> For the record. Okay, so anyway. We're about to do something we've never done before. So we're in a planning stage, in a planning period. The time when we have to make sure that we follow God's preparation. We have to make sure that we have a plan for Saturday so we don't spend half our Saturday asking, well, what do you want to do? 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 Let's go eat breakfast and we'll talk about it. Okay, let's go eat breakfast. Still don't know what we're going to do. Well, let's go eat lunch. Well, we might as well just put the tractor up because we're not ready. It's almost dark. I want to get to supper. And waste the whole day. And you can waste the whole day real quick if you don't have a plan. So it's time to plan. It's time to get a plan together. Focus on what we're doing and make sure that we're following God's preparation. This is his plan, not our plan, right? Yeah. Amen. Amen. I love you guys so very much. Yes, I hope you got something out of this. Some of you looked at me like you didn't know. They didn't at all. But I, I just want you to know, recognize the season you're in. At the church, let me focus. Look at Find the season that you're in. Prepare for the season coming after the season you're in. You with me? Prepare for the next season while you're sitting in this season. While you're sitting at the pool with white stuff on your nose, prepare for autumn. You with me? Yeah. When you're in wintertime, prepare for spring, because spring's coming. And blessings of God are coming in spring. Prepare. I don't know if I did a good job getting that across from your eye. I tried. Set your feet.